Okay, perfect. Um, hi, everybody. Happy Yom Yerushalayim. Um, Yom Yerushalayim Sameach. It's a day in which we say, Zehayom Asa Adonai Nagila Venismehabo. It's a day in which it's appropriate to thank Akadosh Baruchu for the great miracles that, that happened to us during Yom Yerushalayim. For me, um, Jerusalem, besides being such, a, such an important city in a national level, for Am Israel, for our nation, it's also a city that I feel very personally attached to. Um, I had the zechut, I had the merit to spend a few years uh, living in Jerusalem, living in the city of Yerushalayim, and also studying in Yerushalayim. So uh, when I was a little child, we lived in Jerusalem for, for a brief period, period of time. And then after I got married, um, I was studying in the yeshiva of Rabbi Sami Kassim, which is in the old city. And just being there and studying Torah in Jerusalem after 2,000 years in which no Jew was allowed to be there as, a, as, as, as the owner of the land, as the owner of the city, is, is such, such an amazing experience. And it is so appropriate to thank the Almighty, to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for giving us back Yerushalayim. And I would like to, to begin um, sharing with you, let me see if I can share the screen. Yes, I think I can. Great. So I would like to begin with a chapter of Tehillim, the chapter 137, in which it talks about exile in Babel, the Jewish people after the first Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, who were in Babel, and who at that moment started to remember Yerushalayim. And it's a very famous Tehillim in which it says, Al Naharot Babel, Sham Yashavnu, Gam Bachinu, Bezochrenu Etzion, by the rivers of Babylon. Babylon, unlike Israel, was a place filled with water, with rivers. The Jewish people became very wealthy, very rapidly, once they got to Babel. But when we were sitting by the rivers of Babel, Sham Yashavnu, we sat down and we began to cry, Bezochrenu Etzion, as we remembered Zion, as we remembered Jerusalem. And we asked ourselves, we had our musical instruments with us, and we asked, Ech nashir et shir Adonai al admat nechar. How could we sing the sing of Hashem on alien soil, far away from the Beit Hamikdash, far away from Yerushalayim? And at that moment, the Jewish people in the city of Babel said and vowed, Imeshkachech. Yerushalayim tishkach yemini. If I forget you, Jerusalem, if I forget you, Yerushalayim tishkach yemini, may my right hand be forgotten. Why the right hand? Why tishkach yemini? It goes back to playing the instruments. Usually, generally, the, the person who playing his instruments would be using his right hand. So to play the violin or to play the harp, something similar, they would use the right hand. So the, the Jewish people in Babel are saying, Jer Jerusalem, if I forget you, if I don't remember Yerushalayim, there is no point for my right hand anymore. Because the biggest purpose for my right hand is to play songs for Yerushalayim. And tidbak leshoni lehiki im lo ezkerechi. Let my tongue stick to my palate if I do not remember you. If I do not bring up Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, at my happiest moments. So this was between the first Beit HaMikdash 
and the second Beit HaMikdash. When we were in Babel, for the first time we were in exile, we were not in Yerushalayim, and we said as a nation, we vowed, we promised, we are not going to forget you, Yerushalayim. We are going to remember you at every moment, in our happy moments and in our difficult moments, we are going to, to remember you, Yerushalayim. Joy, nice to see you. We are, we are going to remember you, Yerushalayim. So we came back to Jerusalem. We built the Beit HaMikdash again during the second Beit HaMikdash. We had a good time. It lasted a long time. But in the year 70, in the year 68, or in the year 70, the second temple was destroyed again. The Beit HaMikdash was destroyed. Once again, we were put in the same situation as in the exile of Babel. And this very same pasuk that those who were in Babylon were saying and were promising Jerusalem, we will not forget you, Beit HaMikdash, we are not going to forget you, had to be used one more time. And for 2,000 years, day after day, we promised not to forget Yerushalayim. At every moment, we mention Yerushalayim. During Tisha B'Av, we cry for Yerushalayim. We sat in the floor and we still do that. Uh, remembering, crying, praying, telling Hashem we love Jerusalem, we would like to be back. Three times a day in all, in all of our tefillot, we say, We want to see you, Hashem, coming with mercy to, to Jerusalem. Every Pesach, at the end of the Agadah, the happiest moment in the Seder is when all of us sing together, Next year, we shall be in the rebuilt Jerusalem. And finally, during the Chupa, Al Rosh Simhati, in the happiest moment that every person goes through, when we're sitting under the Chupa, we say, this Pasuk that was said again in Babel, I will not forget you, Jerusalem. In 1948, for the first time in 2000 years, we had the chance to fight for Jerusalem. We had the opportunity to take back the city where we belong, to take back the city where we have that special relationship with Akadosh Baruch Hu. That war, the, the war of the independence, was a very, very difficult war with a lot of, with a lot of casualties. But miraculously, um, we had a great, great victory in all fronts. We had victory, uh, uh, great victories against the Iraqis, against the Syrians, against the Egyptians, but there was one place where we lost. There was one place in which we had a terrible, terrible war, and that at the end of that war we lost, and that is the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was lost in 1948 to the Jordanians. But interestingly, during that, uh, after that war, when we lost that war, there was an armistice, and the Jordanians accepted and they said, we will let the Jewish people go back to Jerusalem and come and pray in the Kotel Hama'aravi. Any person, anybody who wants could come and could pray in the Kotel Hama'aravi. The problem is that they didn't really follow through. Once the war was over, the Jews could not anymore go to Jerusalem and we could not anymore go to pray in the Kotel. 19 years later, in 1967, which is the, the day that we are celebrating today, in the Six Days War, as, as we mentioned a little bit last night, we had a class in the community. It was the greatest war that we ever had as a Jewish nation, the war in the Six Day Wars. As we mentioned, the, the, the miracles were tremendous. The expectation, the expectation was that we would lose that war in a, in a terrible, horrible, horrible way. The graves, and I was just seeing um, in Brazil right now, they are digging graves in Brazil, massive, massive graves for what's happening now with the coronavirus. And a little bit of a similar feeling, a little bit of a similar thing happened in Israel in 1967. We were digging graves 
massive, massive graves, expecting casualties in the, in the tens of thousands, some even said in the hundreds of thousands. We anticipated a terrible, terrible loss. But Baruch Hashem, as we explained last night, first of all, we had Operation Moked, in which the Israeli Air Force, within just a few minutes, just a few hours, the Israeli, the Israeli Air Force was able to destroy all the Egyptian Air Force, later on all the Syrian Air Force, and very, very rapidly to turn things around. And Baruch Hashem were able to defeat the Egyptians in the southern front. In the northern front against the Syrians were also succeeding and we were also winning. And the biggest question was, what would happen in the center of Israel? What would happen in Jerusalem? that at that time was in the control of the Jordanians. So Israel and the Jordanians, they got to an agreement and they said, look, Jerusalem, nobody wants to touch. Israel in the beginning of that war said, we have no intention whatsoever to go to Jerusalem. We are okay where we are. We got the South, we got the North, we have Tel Aviv. Just, they told the Jordanians, just stay away. Don't attack us and we will not attack you back. We have no intention of taking Jerusalem. And maybe the greatest miracle of the war, the greatest thing that happened during the Six Day War was that for some reason that only a miracle could explain it, the Jordanians decided to attack Israel. And they attacked us and even though the Egyptian army was already destroyed. The Syrian army had almost no chance for some reason that we cannot comprehend. They decided to attack us and they attacked Israel. And not only did they attack Israel, they also attacked hospitals. They attacked Beth Hadassah hospital, they attacked civilians. So Israel said, we have, we have to respond. And Israel decided, to attack Jerusalem and to attack the Jordanians. It was led by the Tzanchanim, by Moti Gur, who was, who was a great general who decided to attack Jerusalem. But initially they said, look, we will attack Jerusalem, but we are not going to, to try to take Harabait. We are not going to, to try to get the Kotel. Initially, we'll just try to back them off. And not only that, for the first time in the war, in Jerusalem, Israel said, we will not use the air force because if we use our aircraft, there will be many civil casualties. So Israel decided to attack only by land, only through Chel Ragli, only through, through soldiers who would go by foot. And the battle started. And uh, again, miracle after miracle, Baruch Hashem, thank God, the soldiers at Sanhanim, they were able to defeat the Jordanians enter towards the Kotel and enter into Yerushalayim. And when, when we entered into Yerushalayim, as if that wasn't enough, we're able to go inside Har Habayit. Har Habayit, just to explain, is the place where the Beit HaMikdash was. Har Habayit is behind the Kotel, right? We have the Kotel, and right behind the Kotel, there is the Temple Mount, which is where the Temple, which is where Beit HaMikdash was. And when the soldiers entered, the very three famous words were said, Har Habayit Beyadenu. Har Habayit Beyadenu means the Temple Mount is in our hands. And I watched a video today that was just recently released, that it wasn't released before. And such an emotional video in which I saw, maybe for the first time, hundreds of Jewish soldiers, of Hayalim from Tzahal, inside Har Habayit, with our uniforms, with our pride, in full control of the Temple Mount. Now think about that. For 2,000 years, there wasn't one Jewish soldier that stood in that mountain and that claimed that to be ours. But in 1967, which is today, in, in Kafhet of Yad, in the third day of the war, our soldiers, our Hayalim, 
took back Harabait and we said, Har Habait Beyadenu, the Temple Mount is in our hands. And in that video, what one could see is the following. One would see in that video, hey Jack, one would see in that video, the Tzanhanim, the paratroopers, that they are raising their flag of their unit of the Tzanhanim of the paratroops. They are raising it up in Harabait and they are all celebrating and happy and saying, Harabait Beyadenu, we got back the Temple Mount. By the way, during that day, during those days, we got back Baruch Hashem, all of our sacred places. We got back Hebron, we got back Kever Hel, we got back Yerushalayim. And it was such a happy and joyous moment. However, and this is, this is where things get a little bit tricky. During the next day, Moshe Dayan comes to Arabait and he says, bring that flag down. And he says, we shouldn't have the Israeli flag and we shouldn't have the flag of the Tzanchanim in Harabait, in the Temple Mount. We do not want the Temple Mount. We are not interested in taking Harabait. Some say that when Moshe Dayan came in, the people of the Wakaf, the people who were responsible for Harabait, they had their keys with them. And they told Moshe Dayan, can we pray one last time? Let us pray one last time. And you can have the keys, you can have the Temple Mount for you. But our politicians and our nation at that moment said, we do not want the Temple Mount. We are not interested in Harabait. We are okay with the Kotel. And it's a great, great question that everybody has, that I have in my mind, that, that everybody has. Was that the right decision? Giving back Har Habayit, giving back the Temple Mount, giving back the place of the Beit HaMikdash during the day of Kafhet of Yad, during the day that we conquered Jerusalem. Was that the right move to do? Was that the right thing to do? It's very difficult to judge. It's very difficult to say they did something wrong. But it was such an incredible opportunity that we had. During this war, we had the chance to take back into our own hands Harabait, the Temple Mount, the place for the Beta Mikdash. But we didn't. We said, we are not ready. We are not interested. We simply gave it back. Maybe, you know, it wasn't just uh, uh, the, the politicians, it was also the rabbinic world at that time. And again, I'm not criticizing, I'm not saying that what they did was wrong, but I am absolutely raising the question that we should ask ourselves, was that the right thing to do? Is that what we want as a nation? It reminds me a little bit of the very famous story that all of you know, of that man who is drowning and he, he's a very pious man and he tells, he tells God, God, please help me. And as, as he said that, a person on a boat comes, throws him a rope and says, come, I'm, I will save you. And he refuses, he says, thank you, absolutely not. God is going to help me. And a helicopter comes and throws him a rope and he's like, I believe in God, God is going to help me. So he drowns, he dies, gets to heaven and he says, God, why didn't you help me? So God says, what do you mean? I threw at you, I sent you a boat, I sent you a helicopter, but you didn't take it. So the question that I want to ask tonight is, today is 100% such a joyous day. Today is 100% a day in which we should be happy, we should rejoice, we should thank, because we have the Kotel, and we can go to the Kotel, and we can pray. But did we also lose a great, great opportunity? Is there something that is still missing from Yerushalayim? Is there something that we as a nation are still missing? Because you know, maybe for, for, for me, one of the most amazing feelings that I ever had spiritually and that I have every time is praying in the Kotel. Did you ever have that feeling when you go to the Kotel that you, you just feel uplifted spiritually, connected in a way that it's hard to explain with words. So 
So I know for myself on a Friday night when I'm, when I'm there in the hotel and it's packed and everybody's praying and it's noisy, but there is a feeling of tranquility, a feeling of unity, a feeling that all of Am Israel is praying in the hotel. I feel so uplifted. So imagine if we would be praying in the Bet HaMikdash. Praying in the Bet HaMikdash would be a thousand times more than the feeling that, that, that one gets when he prays in the Kotel, maybe as a way of comparison. Right now, many Minyanim are asking the question, are asking whether or not they should go back to the synagogues. Many Minyanim are saying, should we go back to the synagogue or should we continue our Minyanim in Zoom? Could you imagine, could you imagine if, I'm seeing many faces here that I haven't seen in a long time, so it's, it's good to see everybody. But um, imagine if, imagine if, some people would say, we love praying in Zoom. We could continue praying in Zoom. Zoom is okay. A minyan in Zoom is good enough. We don't need Batek Neset. The feeling that I have a little bit, and again, what I'm asking today, which is more about asking questions than giving answers is, as a nation, we always, we always had the desire to get the Bet HaMikdash back. We always prayed for it. We always told Hashem, Hashem, please give us back the Bet HaMikdash. Hashem, please, we would like to go Hashem, we want to go back to, to Jerusalem. We want We will never forget you, Jerusalem. We pray three times a day. We cried in Tishah Be'av. How about today, when, when you think about yourselves, do we also pray for the Bet HaMikdash? Or are we okay with the Kotel? Or are we okay with just having the connection that we have with HaKadosh Baruch Hu through the Kotel? It's possible to say that Yom Yerushalayim, again, I repeat and I emphasize, is a day to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's a day to tell Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, thank you. It's a day to say Hallel, not to say Tahanun. But there is also a little bit of a bittersweet taste. It's a taste in which, yes, we got Jerusalem, but we gave back Harabait. We had the chance to have Harabait. We had the chance to get the Bet HaMikdash, at least the place for the Bet I'm not saying to build the Bet HaMikdash, but we had the chance to have the place where is the holiest place for us, the place in which the Kedusha is, Harabait, and we simply gave it back. Do we want it? Are we asking for the Beta Migdash? Are we crying for the Beta Migdash? Or, or are we satisfied with the Kotel that, that we go to and that we enjoy so much? So the Kotel is a tremendous place. It's a place of Tefillah, but we still have the Beta Migdash that is still not in our hands. And I think that it's, it really is a call for all of us, and for myself included, to remind us that the Geula, Hachamim say, you know, we say every Shabbat, Avinu Shabbashamayim, Sur Israel Vegoalo, Barechet Medinat Israel, Reshit Tzemichat Geulaten. Right? So we say every Shabbat, uh, our Almighty, our Father, bless the state of Israel, the beginning of our redemption. And this is the beginning. And our Chachamim says, Kach hi geulatan shel Israel, kima'a, kima'a. Our sages say how the redemption of Israel is very, very gradual. It's step by step, step by step. So in 1967, we got Jerusalem. We got the Kotel. We had a chance to get also the Temple Mount, and we just gave it back. And we lost that opportunity. And what, what I'm calling and what I'm saying and what I'm asking everybody is, that the Bet HaMikdash is something that we need to have in our minds as something that we want. You know, I have this memory of my first time, or maybe one of my first times, visiting Jerusalem. I must have been four or five years old, and um, my father, who loved and who still loves the old city very, very much, he also, like me, studied, or me like him, uh, studied in the old city. And he wanted to take us to see the Kotel for the first time. 
But as he was taking us to City Kotel, he didn't take us through the traditional way. Rather than going through the normal way, he said, I would like to take you through some secret alleys. And as, as children, that was beautiful. That was very exciting. It was great anticipation to get to the Kotel. And it took us through some, you know, if you, if you know the old city, there are some very mysterious, beautiful, small little streets, like, like little alleys that, that you go through them and you're not sure where you are. And he took us through one alley, through a second alley, myself and my two other brothers. And finally, we got to a terrace. We got to a place which was in a very high, high position in the old city. And he told us, you cannot look. Don't look. He turned us around with our backs to the Kotel. And he said, OK, are you ready? Open your eyes. And, and at that moment, he said, OK, slowly, slowly turn around and look at the Kotel. And I remembered that we looked at the Kotel and we said, wow, wow, look at that. Beautiful. We were so excited. But that wasn't enough. That wasn't it. He had a pair of scissors with him. And he says, now that we are in the Kotel, that we're looking at the Kotel, there is something else that we have to do. We have to do also Kedi'a. And look behind the Kotel. Look at what's happening behind the Kotel. Don't forget what's happening behind the Kotel. That's where the Bet HaMikdash is supposed to be. That is, that is the place in which the Shekhinah is supposed to be. That is the place where we are praying for Hashem to go. So we all did Kedi'ah. We all took a little bit of a scissors and we ripped our shirt a little bit and we said the Pasuk that the Alakha says, and I will just read it for you very, very briefly because we do not have much time. The Alakha says, as it's codified by Harambam, and as if as it is codified by Shulchan Aruch, that Misha Ra'a Ade Yehuda Behurbanam Omer Are Kotshecha Hayumit Bar the Korea. Anybody who sees the, the, the cities of Jerusalem in their destruction should do Kedi'ah. And anybody who sees Bet HaMikdash Bechurbano Omer, Bet Kotshenu Vetifartenu Vekorea, and does Kedi'ah. So I think that today, when it's Yom Yerushalayim, it's a day to ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu and to pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we also want the Bet HaMikdash. And do you know why we want the Bet HaMikdash? Because in the Bet HaMikdash, first of all, there was a feeling, as I said, a thousand times greater than that that exists today in the Kotel. There was a feeling of connection with Akadosh Baruch Hu. A person would enter the Bet HaMikdash and would immediately feel Ruach HaKodesh. And lastly, the last thing that the Bet HaMikdash also had, there was, an, there was a hole in the Bet HaMikdash that was called Lishkat HaGazi. The Shkata Gazit was, the, was where the Sanhedrin was, was where the high court of Israel was. And that high court in the Sanhedrin is where all the halakha for all of Am Israel would come from. There was no mahloket. If there was mahloket, it would be resolved and it would go to a higher court, a higher court, until eventually it would reach our Supreme Court, the court that was in the Beit HaMikdash in the Shkata Gazit. So today, First of all, I thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I tell HaKadosh Baruch Hu, thank you for giving us Yerushalayim. Thank you for giving us the Kotel HaMaravi. Thank you for giving us all of those places. But I tell myself, and I encourage everybody else, to remember that we still need the Beit HaMikdash. We still need to remember the Beit HaMikdash. We still have to learn about the Beit HaMikdash, which is the place in which we connect with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So we continue to pray to Hashem to do that final step, which is to, to give us back the Beit HaMikdash, to give us back Harabait, and that Bezrat Hashem, we should see the Beit HaMikdash in our days. So I wish everybody a happy Yom Yerushalayim. It's great to see some old friends. It's great to see some, some, uh, some very, very good friends from other places. Everybody, please stay safe. Happy Yom Yerushalayim. Shabbat Shalom and Chodesh Tov.